a tremendous uh, veget altering the vegetation, stripping the lot, 60,000 square foot lot, and moving a building. You can do anything you'd like. <laughs> yeah, but I think it needs to be a clear and precise wording and definition that is not. I think that where we're getting into trouble is interpretation. And you can't, yeah, we, on this hand, let's do it, but on others, let's let it ride. You yeah. can't. It's got to be clear and concise. That certainly isn't the way it's done with, with all other projects other than residential. It's clear that, including the buildings, that if there's 10,000 square feet opened up, mm -hmm. then it needs site plan review if it, if it hasn't got there by some other means already. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they don't deduct certain elements. It strikes me as difficult. Once you get into the residential, it becomes unworkable unless you do it for all the residential or anyone that covers 10,000 no. square feet. And if that, you know, I think if it was the intent of the ordinance to require residential to be, con to have that review at 10,000, I think it would, I think it would be all inclusive. I don't think it would. You think what? I think it would be all inclusive. I don't think it would start listing what you don't have to count. I mean, if indeed you're open in 10,000 square feet of land, and if that's the threshold for, to, for review and it includes residential, then it, the 10,000 square feet in its totality should be what plan, site plan review was, is geared to and not, you know, because stormwater runoff is going to happen from roofs of buildings. Mm -hmm. and, and, and on the commercial, that's one of the main things, that way, where is the water going to go off the roofs? Well, is it... Is it a fair assumption that if site plan review is mandated for all, if we move that into the residential, that it could become a significant impact on residential construction? Is that a fa fa safe assumption? Not, it's not for me to answer, but... Sorry? I think that's something you guys should decide whether it is. Eh? What's the length of the process for the site plan review? It's a workshop, no meeting that month. The meeting goes on the next month, and if they feel there's a public hearing, it kicks to the next month. So typically, without a public hearing, it's a workshop in one meeting. With a public hearing, it's a workshop in two meetings. Done with a plan done by a professional. Uh, planning board does not accept the level that the Board of Appeals does. They, their, their plans are much more sophisticated. It has to be done by a professional. Um, it's, an, it's quite an involved process. And not to say that if it's, if it's required, then that's what they have to do. But the level of review is much more intense under site plan review by the plan board because because of the sheer nature of what they use in reviewing, which is commercial. Right. Right. It's, it's my personal interpretation that that was not the intent of the order. I would suggest, Mr. Chair, that we take each of the issues separately on a vote when we get there. Yeah, I agree. Well, it was submitted as one appeal. You can take the two issues separately, though. There's no reason why you can't do that. There are two issues within the appeal, so. In view of the site plan review, portion of the appeal, what is your intention? What, what is your feeling that could come out of this after, at this point in time? And I have to ask the board that before we proceed. Uh, 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 there's a dwelling on the ground. The, the triggering event was the apparent clearing of in excess of 10,000 square feet. That's not that's a subjective opinion, but it appears that, that it was in excess. Uh, 
that doesn't affect the structure bill that's independent mm -hmm. at this time. Any comments? That's my feeling. That a site plan review at this late stage is rather nebulous, if not completely. Well, I don't know if it's nebulous or not, but I guess I'm convinced after listening to what everybody's had to say and looking at the statute that you, by requiring a site plan for this site, we basically impose that burden on uh, a wide ranging number of projects that probably can ill afford additional expense for residential construction. So I guess I'm, and given the language, I agree, A5, 992A5, you could interpret it not to be restricted to commercial, but then you go down to B1 of that same section and it does seem to limit it to the construction alteration enlargement of a single family or two family dwelling unit. Uh, including accessory buildings and structures, which would seem to cover this particular circumstances. And given the history of the town's interpretation of that and the fact that probably every person that's building or has built a town and uh, a residential home in town has not had to go through that requirement, it seems to me to be an odd way to imp impose that burden across the board moving forward. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I agree. We're on the same page. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah, you feel differently? No, I just felt that it needed to be considered as because it was case was made, and I think we've we've certainly had enough conversation. Mm -hmm. I'd move to um, deny the uh, appeal on the site plan issue solely on the site. Well, plan there issue. was an appeal. It was a question. That was all. That was a question. It says they, they question why a site plan review was not required. Okay. It wasn't the appeal because it was no action. <clears throat> well, it was lack of action, but they didn't appeal my lack of action. They just asked the question. So a motion simply stated that a site, plan it is our finding required. that a site plan was not required for, in this instance. That would work. Second the motion. Hold up. Did you state the motion? I stated it as a motion. And Would you restate it, please? That a site plan, it is, our, it is the finding of the board that a site plan was not required in this case. And we are address, ad, addressing the second part of the grievance at this time. That is correct. Yes, Only the second part, okay. Um, the site plan review wasn't required in this case or? Was not required in this instance as it relates to 52 shipwreck. Cove Road, tax map R03, lot 10A. I might suggest that, that, that you might want to consider the intent of the ordinance and, make, and go on record also so that this is wouldn't doesn't come back next month or next year on another project. I mean, you don't have to do that, but... Basically citing 19-91. That it doesn't apply to the residential. You don't have to do that, but it... Okay. What he said. Would you restate it? <laughs> it is the finding of the board that a site plan pursuant to 19-91 that a site plan was not required in the instance of 52 Shipwreck Cove Road, tax map R03, lot 10A. I hear a second. Second. All those in favor? Five in favor, zero opposed. And back to appeal number one, which states in the applicant's uh, wording appeal decision to lift stop work order of 52 Shipwreck Co. Uh, I have a motion in the affirmative. I'd like to make a motion, and I'll be making this in the affirmative, and I'd, I'd like to state this so that it's clear. In regard, uh, a motion to approve the appeal of the decision of the lifting 
of the stop work order issued by the code enforcement officer regarding 52 Ship Rep Code Road. Is that clear? No. Could you state it again, please? The appeal is, uh, the appeal is, uh, the grievance is to appeal the decision to lift the stop work order. In other words, there is a stop work order, was a stop work order. That was lifted based on the decision based at the decision made at the back last meeting. Remedy was suggested. Not by this board. Not by this board. The remedy was suggested. Uh, that remedy was met and the stop work order was lifted. There is an appeal to that decision to lift the stop work order. So the motion we're voting on now is the motion to appeal the decision of the lifting of the stop work order the 52 Shipwreck Code Road. Stop work order was lifted. By the CEO. By the code enforcement officer. So, Is that clear? So if I understand your motion, it, it, if the motion carries, then the stop work order will go back into place. That's correct. That's correct. This, this as all uh, motions are made are made in the positive and the affirmative. Great. And a further clarification, I'm assuming that if the motion carries um, that what is being required or expected is that the applicant, the builder, uh, comply with the interpretation of the 35 foot foot requirement as proposed by the applicant, by the appellant here today, which is to use the high slope for calculating the mean height. Well, you, you, no, that's, you could make findings um, after the, the, that. Uh, well, I guess I would propose a modification to the motion that is part of that motion if it carries that there be a finding that in order to comply with the 35 foot requirement and the height and building deficit definition on page six of the statute that that uh, motion if it carries would also include a finding that in order to comply one would utilize the high cable or high slope calculated mean average but that in essence would have the building permit readdressed correct with that interpretation. Which we have discussed at length, we are beyond that period. Mm -hmm. I have to add that I don't think that you're going back to addressing the original uh, permit. What you're addressing is the current decision. I don't think that that necessarily means that you're changing your mind about the issuance of the permit, but you're, you are changing the interpretation. <laughs> it's a fine point, but I think it's an important point. And I think that's reflected in the motion. The motion is just to approve your appeal of the CEO's decision to lift the stop recorder. Correct. And it's the only issue before us today. Right. Correct. <clears throat> But as a result, you'll have to do findings to that effect um, for a remedy. You'll have to clearly state for the record why it's it's uh, why that doesn't apply and what needs to be done to apply. You know, you have to take that step. Also. 
otherwise. Which is what I was trying to address with my modification of the motion. I think as part of the motion, if it carries, it should include a finding that in order to comply with the statute, we are basically interpreting that section to mean uh, that uh, in order that, that the it's not an averaging of the overall roof height, it's an averaging of the highest slope of the roof. Hence the Greenberg definition. Greenberg, we'll call it the Greenberg definition. <laughs> Go down to local lore. <laughs> And I suppose we'd need a finding on the issue of the notice as well in the 30-day issue. And um, if it carries, if the vote carries, I guess we can add to it findings about the issue of, of uh, the 30 days and why 30 days was adequate notice. Um, I guess I'll propose it at this point in time. The, the, or I'll just make this comment in the sense that at the last hearing, we did not specify what would be required as far as uh, requiring compliance with the code. This, this board did not specify that. And I think at that point in time, the builder was put on notice that there are multiple interpretations as to how to interpret this particular statute. And so I don't think it was necessarily a total surprise or would be a total surprise to this applicant that there are multiple ways of interpreting the statute or that Mr. Greenborg has his definition because that was put forth at that time. And at that point in time, the applicant of that particular appeal, appeal never asked for any clarification or further determination from this board. So what's the motion? <laughs> I would move to approve the appeal of the CEO's decision to lift the stop work order of 52 Shipwreck Cove. And if the motion carries to make a finding that in order to comply, the, the builder will have to comply with the Greenberg definition of uh, highest cable or slope of hip roof, number one, and number two, that if the motion carries, it is carried on the basis that uh, this is merely an appeal of the CEO's decision and that um, it is, uh, the appeal was filed within the 30 days. And further, that at the last hearing there was no condition or determination made as to how compliance would be obtained, number one, and number two, there was no request made at that time for a determination of um, how one would comply, no request made for clarification of the board's decision at that time. So therefore, the 30-day rule does not bar our determination today. Why do you say it doesn't bar that? I'm just making that finding, assuming that the thing carries. I think there's, I think that there is an issue, the 30 day issue troubles, but the fact of the matter is that we are dealing with height. We've been dealing with height through two different hearings. At the last hearing, the builder was put on notice that there are multiple ways to interpret this statute. The builder decided to go ahead without uh, seeking a clarification <coughs> this board as to how you properly interpret it. And the builder also, um, went ahead without talking to any of the butters to get their interpretation of how things should be done. Uh, apparently he did speak with the CEO, uh, but this board has never made a determination as to how one calculates 35 feet. Um, and therefore, I don't think that last ruling bar bars us or binds us to uh, live with any particular determination on that issue. It's not saying that the 30-day that the issue doesn't trouble me, it's not saying that the 30-day issue may not be appealed, but um, I guess that's my, um, my analysis of why, uh, in this particular circumstances, um, the 30-day 30 30 rule may not apply. The original 30 days I'm referring to from the date of the original commit. 
I'd like to, for you to hold the motion for just a moment sure. and let's discuss this because this has gotten more complicated. Sure. So we're going to table the motion momentarily and I'd like to clear this up. Uh, we've already identified that it was too hot. A remedy, we said a remedy needs to be determined. A remedy was proposed, I'm not sure either by the code officer or the applicant, or conjunction of discussion of the, the, the remedy that has so far taken place based on the last meeting. Was that suggested by you or was that suggested by the bill? Did no. you prescribe that remedy is what I'm asking? No. No. I approved that remedy. You approved the remedy. That was already suggested by applicant before he even came to the board. Before. He, he had known he was going to be denied last time. I suspect that he probably would have just done that without appealing. So a remedy was undertaken. Now we're, what we are in essence saying that the remedy is not appropriate. If that vote carries, yes. But it's not appropriate based on the fact that the the original determination of, of how I determined being level right. in November uh, was inaccurate. Was what? It was inaccurate. It was not right. Which brings us back to the same issue. No matter how you look at it, it looks like it's tied together. But I'm not suggesting to you that that is my description here is a data complete or that it kiboshes any argument on the mid 30 day issue. It certainly doesn't, but I think there's another way to look at the timeliness issue. And I think that is that we've been dealing with light right along. Uh, there was an appeal made last time, we denied the appeal. There was never a request made to this committee this board to determine how one calculates it, and this is the first time that issue has been put to this board. So I don't think the last one bars us, and I think that the CEO's issue, or at least it can be argued that the CEO's issue of the stop work order uh, on height opens up this whole issue to interpretation and, deter and determination. I don't think in the years that I've been on the board that we've ever recommended the remedy. It's not really our role. It's, it's our role just to vote A or nay on right. appeals. And so it was not properly before us last time to determine how to fix it. So that's the point I'm making is, you know, we didn't make it, we didn't tell them what to do last time. They went out and made certain assumptions about how to comply based upon notice from Mr. Greenberg last time that there's multiple ways to interpret this. And so I, I guess I'm struggling with why it's in the motion then. Why what's in the motion? The fact that we... The findings? Yeah, the last month's findings and the fact that neither we recommend or approve right. the remedy that was taken in the 30 days since. Right. So I, I, I'm, I, I don't understand why it would be well, I guess I was putting it in there because Mr. Smith suggested it also by not putting it in the finding last time. Somebody went out and changed their position oh, based upon their assumption that somehow there would have been a determination of how to correct it when there clearly wasn't. So, so you sense I'm that I'm just trying to bring a little closure to that issue. I'm open to either include that finding or not include that finding. Let me, let me point out something that is 
obvious, maybe, maybe uncomfortably obvious. And that is the definition of, of the roof. I want to go back to that. Our, our sole concern right now is height. Not massiveness of structure, not, it, it meets the massive guideline if there is such a thing. Uh, there's not a problem with, uh, according to the ordinance, there's not a problem with that as far as coverage. Uh, there's certainly a problem with that with the neighbors and I sympathize with that and I feel that and I, uh, uh, it concerns me. But the massiveness of the structure, if I may use that term since it was used earlier, is not what we're looking at. We're looking at the height. Let's take off the top 19 feet of the structure. Just cut it completely off, which is, according to this, whether you look at a one-pitch roof, two-pitch roof, three-pitch roof, uh, according to Mr. Greenberg, and I, I, I like his ideas, but let's take all of his ideas away. And allow me to demonstrate or interpret so everybody can understand what I'm getting at. This is one side of the structure. The roof, roof ridge is right here, it's off the paper. This line goes to the roof ridge. This is the lowest point of the roof, or the drip edge right here. Not this lower feather edge, but the shingled area. That area is 19 feet, four and a half inches. The way the house is constructed and it seems to be the hang up of, of this uh, appeal that keeps clouding the issue is do we look at this slope? Do we look at this slope? All right, let's look at neither. Let's take this house and take the top 20 feet off or 19 feet, four and a half inches, just cut it off. Let's put the roof ridge exactly where it is today uh, before it was cut off, where it exactly was three weeks ago. The roof ridge was right here. It's, it's since been flattened, but it was here. Take a line and draw that from here to here. Here's the third floor of the house. Draw a line from the roof ridge to this same point that was used here and you now have a standard pitch gable end house. You still have a third floor. The part that is changed is the interior of two sides, the left and the right side, or the north and the south, whatever it is, is that this triangle here is cut off. I have a second floor in my house and, and in our bedrooms, there's a similar type triangle. I don't know if the dimensions are the same or not. Where the, the rafters cut into my bedroom wall. Uh, now, if you did that and put the new roof back on with a non-gambrel roof, a standard pitch roof, ending at the exactly same point as it is today, uh, today with the gambrel, ending at the exact same point it was three weeks ago, the midpoint would be exactly where it is on this plane. The massiveness, the view obstruction, everything else would not be affected at all by an alteration of the roof. I don't agree with that because you're cutting off this whole section here. So from the front of the building, the massiveness has cut down dramatically. From the, from the water view, from the water side, from the water side, and it's no, cut down from the other side. And from the, the back side. To finish up with what you were saying, where's 35 on that? Sorry? Where's 35 feet? Well, it was determined at the last meeting that it was 14 feet, 14 inches below this point. So if the... If, that's the one I just corrected there. We didn't make any determination no. of what 35 feet was. We just no, either we said yeah or nay to the... I wouldn't hear. 
You did determine that it was 14 inches? We just determined it was over 35 feet. So the question has to be raised is, is Is it, if you completely redo the roof structure, would it benefit what I hear is the primary grievance of the audience, which is the massiveness of the structure? My guess is you're never totally satisfied until the house is gone, but they probably live with something less. <laughs> uh, that's never going to happen under this definition, no matter what they rule. And, and I, I, I hope the audience sees that point also. Uh, I, the, the, uh, the green birds on one side are going to be looking at, they're, they're looking from the left side or the right side, whichever it is, left side, whatever you want to call it, front uh, side. The their, their profile is going to be identical. Right. Now, do you see my point? I, I, I see your point, but I don't think that that's, I mean, I, I, I correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Cleveland, the, the determination of what was out of what would, was in violation was an interpretation. Would, we want to hear you. Would you please come to the sorry, podium sorry, and state that? What was in violation was based on an interpretation that was made by Mr. Smith about how you determined the height of the building. In, in November. In November. But, but what, you know, so, so the, it's all about interpretation. And I think what Mr. Galino is saying is th this board never determined anything about what was 35 feet and where 35 feet was and how do you bring this building into code or any of that. All this board said was, you know, at the last meeting, we, we agree that the building is in violation of the 35 foot height ordinance. That was all that was said. And all that we said after, then, then Bruce received a plan from the developer to lower the ridge by what was 28 inches actually, which was, you know, to bring it back to the mean level from Bruce's original interpretation of what 35 feet was, was accepted by Bruce. And what we're appealing is that decision to lift the stop work order, still based on our interpretation that of the, where that 35 foot height level should be. So we're offering our interpretation of what 35 feet is versus Bruce's interpretation of what 35 feet is. And the reason why, Mr. LaPlante, why the original grade was not even discussed tonight was that at the last meeting we were told that it had been determined that it was no longer possible to determine what the original grade was. So we didn't bring it up tonight. I don't, I, I don't feel that way. I think it's not too late to determine what the original grade was, but we were told by the board at that time, it's too late to talk about original grade. So we didn't try to take another bite out with that. Um, just a couple other comments. I just wanted to comment on two things. Uh, first, with regards to, the, I think the most useful drawing maybe is this exhibit, example C, that was put forth by the applicant. And um, although I think there's a little bit of a slope still to that top, what he, they show as being flat here, I think what would happen is you're going right now, by using the average of the entire roof definition, um, you end up at 35 feet. Um, but if you use the mean level of the highest slope, uh, you end up at 39.5 feet. So if you um, 
adopted greenberg's interpretation of the of that section of the stat of the ordinance you're in essence i think going to be knocking this building down by a couple feet at least so you take that same example there's so many ways that you can go with this you take that same thing and ground don't 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 have the roofs around it to a quonset you know that's another example quonset roof is going to put you right back to a peak roof the only the, the only we're separating a roof that has something that turns at a steep angle and, and say, calling that one thing and then we're taking everything else and grouping it into the other category. In reality, it's a roof structure, in my eyes, that, that goes from eaves to peak. Yeah. See, and I guess I disagree with that because I think the Mansard style roof, um, I think the zone, that definition was designed specifically, the use of the word highest gable or highest slope. I think is designed to get you to focus on the highest slope specifically to avoid the situation where people increase the size. I think the idea is buildings are 35 feet if they have a flat roof. However, we're going to allow them to go taller than that if it's a peaked roof because you have less square footage. You start to push that angle back out to being vertical, you're pushing against the idea of being at 35 feet. In other words, you're increasing the square footage of your building. So you could not take that rule and cut it at 35 feet using the Greenberg method, is it? <laughs> well, you, you would. And still, not, and still and not get three stories full? You could. Would it be even uglier? No, I don't, I don't know if it would be uglier. I think you can comply with that a number of different ways. You can go with the traditional roof. In which case you could you not flatten that out and still get three full stories if you go flat you're stuck at 35 feet right right could you not flatten that out at 35 feet and get three full stories yes yeah. that's what i just described yes, yeah and that's what the statute allows for right what the statute allows that you for is, 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 is allowing that extra above 35 feet prevent that, flat. To, to encourage that was to encourage a slope or, or a pit roof and i don't think his definition violates that principle how does it violate that principle? If exactly, well, I think it boils down to if somebody wants something bad enough, they'll come up with a way to do it, <laughs> sure. And that could mean flatten a roof out. But then they're limited still to 35 feet. Then they can't go an inch over 35 feet with a peak. They wouldn't have to. They could get still three to four bullets. Not as currently designed. If you take the design as it currently is and you just flatten it down, you're going to find that you're in excess of 35 feet if you also include the four and a half foot foundation, which is not as currently designed. Right. right. Currently designed based on the applicant coming to me before he had the plans drawn up to find out where he could take his mean level from. In all due respect, that decision was made well before this meeting, and it's still tied to this. No matter how you get around it, your decision is tied to, to you make a decision that the mean level will be somewhere other than where I determined it in November. Simple as that. No way around it. And I'm not defending the applicant. I'm defending the fact that in good faith he came to the town and in good faith I made an interpretation. And if you're going to overturn uh, that several months down the road with money invested, I think there's a travesty for the applicant and for the, for the people that, that come forth uh, in the future. Unfortunately, I tend to agree. I do as well. That that the footprint of this building is established. The dwelling will be constructed as roughly as the walls exist today. The vertical sides of the wall as they exist today. What are the options? 
He could. So if I can find the Greenberg C. Three foot walls. He'd, he'd have two uh, stories and perhaps some space in the attic. And while that's much larger than what we'd like to see, it would be much more reasonable. It would be this line. Yeah. Lowered, this is the original drawing, lowered 28 inches, which he could easily bump out with full gables, uh, uh, dormers on each side. That'd be one option. Mm -hmm. uh, you start pumping out with dormers and you're back to the, uh, then you go directly to what the, the uh, ordinance is talking to in terms of uh, highest angle, I believe. Say again then, sorry. If you start bumping out with dormers, then you've got higher angles and that's no, directly no. spoken to by- Dormers does, not affect the, the roof pitch at all. That's that's not a calculated in the roof pitch, correct, Ruth? Mr. Smith. I I'd rather look at that situation before I okay. uh, get an answer either way. But are we heading down the road of trying to suggest an alternative? No, I'm or? not at all. I'm just saying that it. We said it had to be fixed. It was it was fixed. There are a number who aren't comfortable with the fix. Although the ordinance could be interpreted where the, the definition of the slope as it has as you identified for the past 15 years. That was a decision that was made in in last November, the overall definition of the roof, the gable end of the roof, it was determined that it was too high, not because of the construction, but because of the original grade. Can't change the original grade at this point, so the roof was lowered. Now, I hear the audience saying it wasn't lower than not. All I'm saying is, if it needs to be lowered more, what are the alternatives? Flatten it off? Do a new pitch? My point is that, that either it does match or it doesn't match the, the definition in the ordinance. But the basic structure exists as it stands. I think my point, to your point there, is if you want, if you are in agreement that it's not 35, it's in excess of 35, I think that as a board, all we can say is that you're not at 35, this is where you need to be, how you get there, there's a number of alternatives that you can pursue. That's what the it's, board did last time. Right. Yeah, I would, I would suggest this. I think we should um, vote the issue up or down. If we vote to approve the appeal of the CEO's decision to lift the stop work order, in essence, putting the stop work order back in place, then I think we need to go on and make some findings um, that will give these people some directions as we move forward, and also we'll address the 30-day issue and how we uh, see the 30-day issue, but if the vote goes down, if it sounds like there's some sediment about voting it down, then um, we don't need to get there. Um, 
the other thing, and I would just add a couple other points. Um, it sounds like I may be in a minority, but I do think that um, the issue of how it was re remediated last time was not dealt with, and therefore I think that height issue is still fair game. That's not to say that there's not an issue on the 30-day permit issue, and I would anticipate that it's, it may be likely that the, if we were to vote to approve the appeal, I would assume that it's not unreasonable to expect that there may be an appeal of this, our decision, which may cost the town a fair amount of money um, to, to deal with, uh, and other people money to deal with. So um, that is something certainly to take in consideration when voting on this particular motion. But I think we should vote on the motion first, just as a bald motion. If it fails to carry, then we're done. If it does carry, then we can take up additional findings. Would you please make a motion then? Sure. Repeat your motion, please. Sure. I would move to approve the appeal of the CEO's decision to lift the stop work order of 52 Shipwrecks Cove. Um, Did I say that correctly? Everybody got it? <laughs> Seconded. All those in favor? All those opposed? The appeal was denied. None. Next meeting, August 24th. I have a motion to adjourn. So move. Second. All in favor? Favor. All opposed? Uh, you're probably